Okay, so I'm going to follow on with what Craig just talked about and specifically look at um, an economic assessment that we've been doing that actually is on the same project that Craig was talking about. And in fact, Craig led the feasibility study that looked at this project. And um, Peter, I think you helped get the money to do that feasibility study. Well, what we then did is said, are there some lessons that we can draw out of that feasibility study in a little bit more of a generic and simplistic approach and present it. And so we've actually written a fact sheet. And as of last week, <clears throat> this fact sheet is published and available online. And so the guiding questions behind this fact sheet are, what are the importance of the relative difference of an AD project's operating cost with respect to its capital cost? We know these are really expensive technologies. We always hear that as a, a major deterrent to actually moving forward with them. Is that, is that a good objective? Uh, how do different end uses for the biogas, is, you know, heat, electricity, and RNG affect the profitability of the project? How important is revenue from fiber and nutrient products to digest your profitability, and how important are environmental payments? And I'm going to focus mostly on the two red ones um, and spend the majority of the discussion around looking at this RNG add-on and what the possibility that that brings. So here's basically the three scenarios that we pulled out and looked at. This is the standard anaerobic digester project with a combined heat and power operation as the power plant. Um, capital cost on this was $4.4 million. The second alternative we looked at is what if we don't produce any energy at all and just, just put in a boiler? Again, the capital cost was still $4.4 million. And then the third one is let's do what Craig just talked about and do the upgrading and compression and go to RNG. And then we've got several scenarios in terms of what the RNG might look like, including whether it goes in the pipeline or whether it goes to a refueling station and then what are the possible RINs that could, that could affect that. An interesting piece on this is the RNG infrastructure was additional to the baseline system. So we assume that the baseline system existed. The total capital here is quite a bit more expensive. OK, so looking at this, average annual capital and operating costs of an anaerobic digester project under different configurations. And of course, this is based on this one model that was looked at. So the baseline CHP system, the boiler, and the RNG, kind of the baseline RNG, the capital costs here, the operating costs here, and the really important one is what's the relationship between operating capital costs. And you, we saw earlier that the capital costs on the boiler system are not that different or weren't different at all from the, the baseline system, and yet the operating costs are, are almost non-existent. So what does that tell you? Let me move it to the other side, maybe. OK, is that better? OK, so what that tells you is most of the operating costs have to do with producing energy. All right, so there's an important principle there. You can't ignore the operating cost, and putting energy out of the system is where those costs are. Then you look down here in the operating costs. Not only was the capital cost higher on the RNG system, but the operating costs are a little bit higher. And yet, the, you know, the ratio is a little bit more balanced, OK? So the next one is, where do you get your revenues from these three systems? Of course, with the CHP system, you know, about 50% of the revenues come from the electricity sales. In the RNG system, that comes largely from the RNG sales. Uh, in the boiler system, fiber and nutrients drive the whole thing, OK? So what's the net present value? So when economists talk about understanding the profitability of a system, net present value is one of the key factors that they use. It's a little bit different than how bankers look at it. But, but basically, what they're saying is, when you're at any point in time, is the project worth what you put in it or not? And if it's got a positive net present value, then it's a good investment. And so again, the three scenarios here, baseline, the boiler, and the RNG system, Looking just at the energy production, um, they're both not very good investments. And the RNG, of course, is a really bad investment if you're looking just at the energy. If you take the energy and the fiber and the nutrients and put them together, you know that the CHP system becomes a pretty decent investment, but the RNG system still isn't in terms of the baseline RNG. And actually, the boiler system doesn't look too bad. 
you get some environmental incentives and they're all a net present value that's positive and the CHB system looks better still. So let's dig at that a little bit further. So here again is net present value assuming a couple of different variables. So one of those variables is the price of fiber and nutrients in the, in the baseline scenario was a pretty moderate price. But if Jim's right and there's more potential value and we can assume that over time that we're going to achieve more value for those fiber and nutrients, you know, at, at a 5 to 20 percent increase in time of the value of those nutrients, what could that do to the net present value? And then what if we change the discount rate? So we'd basically use this 4% discount rate, but you could change the discount rate and, and that has an effect. And so what do you see here is with the CHP system and the RNG system, if fiber and nutrients add value or gain in their appreciation and their value from the projects, that can be a pretty significant impact on the net present value of the projects, okay? Um, the discount rate again can be can be pretty, pretty important in terms of which one you choose. And that might, might actually have more, more influence on whether the banks will finance a project. OK, so contributions to revenue by RNG price scenario. And so what we've done here is we've taken the two possible pathways for RNG, the one where we say we're going to put it in the pipeline at the commodity value of, of natural gas, and the second one is we're going to take it to retail. There's some additional costs in terms of taking it to retail that we calculated in, including the refueling infrastructure. What was not calculated in was the vehicles that could use the compressed natural gas. So that would have to be on top of that. Um, but basically, what you see here is that, you know, the renewable gas price really jumps up in terms of its value proposition when you take it to that retail level and have your own infrastructure. Um, again, it costs more to do that. So what does that look like? And, and there's, here's a, we've entered a second um, factor here, so not just the net present value, but also a benefit cost ratio. And that gives you a, a good way to value the relative um, the relative investment to a dollar invested, how much is returned based on the, the original investment. And so the AD CHP system here, which we've shown, you know, that seven and a half million kind of big net present value is about a 1.8 to one return on investment. Um, the RNG, just the baseline commodity value, again, we, we already said that wasn't a really good investment. It was positive, but it just wasn't great. If we can get the renewable, the, the, the RIN tag, the renewable fuel standard credit, it really jumps. And so that's where Craig was saying that being able to get some kind of environmental credit makes all the difference on one of these projects. And then if we can sell at retail and get that renewable credit, then we really jump in value to the point where all of a sudden these RNG scenarios actually look better than a CHP scenario in spite of the fact that we're you know, approaching and well over double the capital cost invested in the project. Okay. So there's one more question, and, and Craig hinted at this, but if there is a, a renewable fuel standard or some other kind of credit like a RIN, can the project actually recover all of that to the project? And so the answer is, you know, maybe in some cases yes, but probably in a lot of cases no. So what does that look like in terms of the impact on the project? And so this, this scenario and this scenario are the two that we just looked at where, you know, we assumed 100% of that RIN was retained by the project and the commodity plus the RIN or the pipeline plus, plus the RIN. And in this one, the RNG infrastructure, refueling infrastructure, and we retain 100%. But you can see then, what if we can only retain part of that RIN on each of those? It, it drops that value point, okay? So, you know, at least 75% of the RIN is where we're at a comparable project to the CHP system. So I mentioned, as I started, we actually have this fact sheet ready, and there's the URL for it. Um, or you could just look on our website, and it's, it's there. Um, but 
hopefully this approach kind of gives a, a much simpler, much easier to digest way to look at the feasibility study and just get a sense of it. We're also working on one specific to nutrient recovery technology in terms of the same feasibility study on this project. So we'll hopefully within a year we'll have the other one out.